Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be asking a question about the prime numbers. I'm going to be asking if there are infinitely many primes of a particular form. Now before I get into that, I've just written down any possibility a positive integer can take. It can either be a multiple of 6, 1 more than a multiple of 6, 2 more than a multiple of 6, 3 more, 4 more or 5 more. Now if it's a multiple of 6 itself, then clearly 6 is going to divide that guy there. If it's 1 more than a multiple of 6, well I'll leave that for now. If it's 2 more than a multiple of 6, well then clearly 2 is going to divide that because 2 divides 6 and 2 divides 2. Similarly, 3 is going to divide uh, 6k plus 3, so if it's 3 more than a multiple of 6, and if uh, it's 4 more than a multiple of 6, then 2 is going to divide it. So if k is a positive integer, there's no way that 6k can be prime, 6k plus 2, 6k plus 3, or 6k plus 4 can be prime because we found a factor of all of them. So essentially, if we have any prime number bigger than 6, it must be either 1 more than a multiple of 6 or 5 more than a multiple of 6. But notice, if it's 5 more than a multiple of 6, then it's 1 less than the next multiple of 6. So essentially, any prime number bigger than 6 must be 1 more or 1 less than a multiple of 6. And you might say, well, why have I insisted that we have prime numbers bigger than 6? Well, notice that 2 and 3 are prime numbers, but they're clearly of this form and this form. And the reason it kind of holds then is because we have 2 dividing 6k plus 2. So this is a case where k equals 0. So 2 divides this guy here. So the only possible way this guy here could be prime is if this guy here exactly equals 2, which is the case when k equals 0. But if this guy here was bigger than 2, then there's no way that it can be prime because 2 divides it. And similarly for 3. So we've kind of proved in, in me just talking, we've proved that every prime bigger than 6 is 1 more or 1 less than a multiple of 6. We want to know, are there infinitely many primes of the form 6k plus 5, which I guess I could write as 6k minus 1. So 1 less than a multiple of 6. Okay, so if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to jump straight into a solution. <laughs> Okay, so the answer to this problem is yes, there are infinitely many primes which are one less than a multiple of six. And that's my claim up here, but of course we've got to prove it. And the way we're going to prove this is actually quite nice. It's going to follow a similar flavour to when we prove that there are infinitely many primes just regularly by the Euclidean argument. So if you've not seen that before, I'll quickly rush over it. Suppose there are finitely many primes, multiply them all together and add one. Then this resulting number you get can't be divisible by any of the primes that we have in our finite list, which we're supposing is the list of primes. But this new number we've constructed doesn't have a prime factor, which are any of these guys. And that's a contradiction because every positive integer, which is at least two, must have a prime factorization. OK, so we're going to follow a similar fa flavor in proving this result here. We're going to suppose for contradiction there are only finitely many primes of the form 6k minus 1 and generate a new number and, and essentially generate a prime which is not in this set, but is of the form uh, 1 less than a multiple of 6. OK, so we're going to suppose there are only finitely many primes. So we're going to say let p be equal to the set of primes p for which p is of the form 6k minus 1 and that's for some positive integer k and I guess p here I should explicitly write that p is a prime number but let's just uh, not write it because I'm a bit lazy p curly p is a set of primes p for which uh, p is one less than a multiple of six and we're supposing for contradiction that p curly p is a finite set there are only finite many primes of this form then what we're going to do is, so I guess let's explicitly write that, cardinality of p is less than infinity. Then what we're going to do is just multiply all the primes that are in p. So we're going to construct this number n, which is simply going to be the product of the primes in p of p. And now what we do in the Euclidean proof, where we're proving there are infinitely many primes, is we add 1 to this guy here. Now we're not going to do that, but we're going to do something similar. We're going to multiply it by 6 and then take off 1. Okay, so we get this number here. So n is 6 times the product of all the primes in curly p, and then we're going to subtract off 1. Now firstly, this is clearly going to be a positive integer, which is at least 2, because we know that curly p has the element 5 in it. So this guy here is going to be at least 6 times 5 minus 1, so at least 29, and it's clearly a positive integer. So this guy here is a positive integer, which is at least 2, which means it has a prime factorization with uh, sort of unique primes. Okay, so we want to know what are what primes fall into this guy here. What primes are the prime factorization in n? Well, clearly 2 is not going to be a factor of n. And to see that, we clearly see that 2 divides this term here because of the 6 here. 
So this is some even number, six times some whole number. So this all in all is going to be even, but then we're taking off one. So it's going to be odd, and hence two is not going to divide at n. Similarly, three is not going to divide n, because again, three divides this guy here because of the six, but then we're taking off one. So it's no longer going to be a multiple of three. So two doesn't divide n, three doesn't divide n. So that means any prime factor of n, it's either going to be five, which is one less than a multiple of six, or the prime factors are going to be bigger than six. And in which case we already showed that then it must be one more or one less than a multiple of six. So all in all, we've shown that the prime factors of n, each prime number which divides n must be either one more or one less than a multiple of six. And now what I'm going to do is claim that they can't all be one more than a multiple of six. So in other words, there exists some prime number which I'll call q, q a prime, with q divides n. Now we know that q is going to be one more or one less than a multiple of six, but I claim that there exists a prime q such that q is uh, in p. So in other words, q is a one less than a multiple of six. Okay, well, let's see why. Well, if a prime q didn't exist, then, then that means that every prime factor of n is one more than a multiple of six. So in other words, if this wasn't true, then each, let's say, q tilde, a prime dividing n, would have that q tilde is of the form 6k plus 1. So in other words, q tilde is congruent to 1 mod 6. But then that means if all the prime factors uh, of n are 1 mod 6, then that means certainly when I multiply all those primes together and get n, then n is going to be congruent to 1 mod 6. But of course that's not true because from this guy here, clearly n is minus 1 mod 6. So that means this guy, this leads us to a contradiction. So in other words, this guy must be true. In other words, there does exist a prime q, which divides n such that q is one less than a multiple of six. So let's just quickly go over that argument. I think I went through it a bit too quickly. We claiming, we're claiming that there's a prime q, which is one less than a multiple of six, and that q divides n. If that wasn't the case, all primes that divide n must be congruent to one mod six. But then when you multiply all those primes together to give us n, then that product is just going to be a bunch of ones when we look at it mod six. So of course it's going to be equal to one. So then that would tell us that n is equal to one mod six. But just from the definition of n, that's clearly not true because n from this guy here is just minus one mod six. So this guy here must be true. There must exist a prime q such that q divides n and q is one less than multiple of six. So q is in curly p. But hopefully we can see that this is actually a contradiction in itself because if we have a look at n, n is the product of uh, primes in p multiplied by 6. Ignore the 6 for now, but in particular, this guy here is going to be a multiple of q. Okay, so this guy here is going to be a multiple of q because we know that q is going to be in this product here because q is in p. So this guy here is going to be a multiple of q, but then we're subtracting off 1. So that means there's no way that n can be a multiple of q, or the only way that could be possible is if q was 1. But q is clearly not 1 because q is a prime number. So that means that we have this guy here is a multiple of q, so and then we're taking off 1, so in particular q cannot divide n. So we've got that q divides n, but simultaneously q cannot divide n by this argument we've given here, and of course that is a contradiction. Um, so, of course, yeah, that's a contradiction. The q doesn't divide n, but it simultaneously does divide n, so that means that our original assumption must be false, that this guy here cannot be finite the i.e. there are infinitely many primes of the form 6k minus 1. And I guess one thing we should just point out is where we use the fact in our argument, where we used that this was finite once we sort of started our proof by contradiction, was in defining n. Of course, if curly p was infinite, then this guy here would just be infinity and our argument wouldn't really make any sense. Okay, so we use the fact that curly p was finite in our proof um, and we arrived at a contradiction. Hence, there must be infinitely many primes of the form 1 less than a multiple of 6. Now you might be asking why I looked at primes which are one less than a multiple of six and not one more than a multiple of six. Because of course in the start of the video we showed that there are uh, all primes bigger than six must be either one more or one less than a multiple of six. Well if you try this argument here and just replace this guy here with a plus one, you can see that it's going to fail a little bit. And it fails kind of in this step here. We can't guarantee that there's a prime q uh, that divides n uh, such that q is in p. So if we define p now to be plus n, and the reason that's true is because 
Well, we can multiply a bunch of minus ones together and end up with one, which uh, means that the argument won't hold for plus one. However, why it works for this case is we can never multiply a bunch of ones together and get minus one. Okay, so to prove that this is true, and in fact this is true, there are infinitely many primes of the form 6k plus 1, you actually have to do a bit more work, but I'm not going to do that in today's video. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.